right now that you bless the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart that they might be acceptable in your sight. Lord, you are my strength and my redeemer. Just believe in the Lord to say amen. Amen. So go with me to the passage that was read this morning, Job 38, 1 through 11. And when you found this passage of Scripture, please signify by saying amen. Job 38, beginning at the first verse. When you found this passage, signify by saying amen. All right, there's a few amens. All right, all right. And it reads, it reads as follows. Reb, I'm try not to hold you long today, but God might. Then the Lord spoke to Job. Then the Lord spoke to Job out of the storm. He said, who is this that obscures my plans with words without knowledge? I'm reading from the New International Version. Brace yourself like a man. I will question you and you shall answer me. Where were you when I laid the earth's foundations? Tell me if you understand. Who marked off its dimension? Surely you know. Who stretched the measuring line across? On what were its footings set or who laid its cornerstones? Come on, Job, tell me. While the morning stars sang together and all the angels shouted for joy, who shut up the sea behind doors when it burst forth from the womb? Come on, Job, tell me. When I made the clouds its garment and wrapped it in thickness, darkness, and thick darkness. Come on, Job, tell me. When I fixed limits for it and set its doors and bars in place, when I said, this is false, you may come and no farther. Here is where your proud waves halt. For just a few moments, for just a few moments. And, and, and didn't the choir just, just, just show out today? Praise team, amen. Yeah, for, for just a few moments, I really might want to change my my my. Subject to, it's going to be all right. But then I could change it to, 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 God favored me. Come on, y'all. <laughs> Come on, y'all. I, I, I mean, I sat there and I listened to these songs and, and, and I just was like, oh, Lord, just thank you for how you are preparing the hearts and the minds of the people through music for what I'm about to give them in words. My subject is in times of trouble. So I'm, I'm going to add, in times of trouble, it's going to be all right. In times of trouble, God will favor you. I like that, y'all. I like that, y'all. I like that. I like how God has set this up. Right now, right now, there are many of you here in the church facing some rough times. You might not want to tell the person on the road with you. You might not even want to tell yourself. Come on, somebody. But there's folks going through things, kids going through things, young people dealing with stuff in school that we, we, we didn't deal with. Come on, y'all. Some, some in the area you might have uh, problems with might be finance. Some might be family relationships. Some in the area of your relationship with God. Some might have some physical health problems. Amen. Some of you might be facing all these at the same time, and some I haven't even named. Amen. Mm, the more amens I get this morning, the faster I preach. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all will wake up in a minute. There's times in our lives when things just don't seem to go the way we want them to. Come on, y'all. And in the midst of those, those times, 
that, 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 that Satan tends to hit you the hardest. That's right. He knows our weaknesses. Come on, yeah. Never forget one thing. Just because we love the Lord and we're doing our best for God, that does not mean you're not going to have hard times. The only thing we are guaranteed is that Jesus, God, our Father, the Savior, is there with us. You can bank on that. Oh, yes, you can. Mm. And, 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 and you can bank on this. He has a plan. <laughs> he has a plan for the situation you're in. Y'all don't hear me right now. A plan to deliver you from your tough times. Hmm. I, I, I know it's hard. I know it's hard. I know it's hard. It's really hard to go through the day-to-day -day pain, suffering, the headaches. Come on, y'all. And still keep your faith. I know. I, I'm human. I have days. I, I, I'm going to give you a few points this morning to help you when, when you get weak. There, 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 there comes a time in every one of us when we're going to begin to doubt. You can say, man, we doubt his presence. We doubt his provisions. Come on, y'all. We, 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 doubt, we doubt his love. In other words, we just don't understand what's going on. Somebody out there has said, how can a loving God, how can a loving God, all-powerful God, an all-knowing God, just stand there and watch me suffer? Oh, you can say amen, somebody. Somebody been through something, and somebody in here has said those words. Why doesn't God do something about it right now? What's he waiting on? What's he expecting out of me? God, where are you? <laughs> I need you now, not tomorrow. Why can't I just get the answer I need? Today. God, what you waiting for? <laughs> Those are suffering, sickness, diseases. Are trying to believe God for their miracle of healing. But for some reason, it's just not happening the way you want it to. Am I talking to anybody? God told me to talk to somebody this morning. Come on now. Am, am I the only one who's ever thought these things and questioned God? These, 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 these thoughts are part of humankind. The best example of a man under the trials and tribulations I'm talking about is found with this man in the text today named Job. In Job chapters 38 and 39, we find God asking Job a lot of questions. In those two chapters, we find God asking more questions of a man than anywhere else in the Bible. The amazing thing is that Job couldn't answer any other questions. Job was at this point in his suffering when he was losing confidence in God. Oh, come on, y'all. He needed a reminder of who God was. Job was a man of God. He had faith in God. He served God with all his heart. The very first thing we read about Job, it tells us he was perfect and upright and one that feared God and hated evil. That's the word. Job was blessed. Job was blessed. Job was blessed. Blessed with seven sons and three daughters. He was a rich man, huge ranch. Come on, y'all, watch this right here. He, he had 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 1,000 oxen. Watch this right here. And 500 donkeys. 
Somebody probably saying, I'm going to go across the field right quick because I'm a country boy, Ann. Somebody saying, what's important about donkeys? He got oxen. He got sheep. He got, he got all these things. Why do you need donkeys? Well, we have three up at our farm. And those three by themselves make the worst noise, but they tell us if any wolves are coming, any coyotes are coming, if anything, they protect everything else on the farm. So to have 500 of these jokers, <laughs> that's an army all by itself on the farm. Job was faithful in giving back to God part of what he was given. Come on, y'all. Are we talking about tithes and offerings? Y'all want me to go down this road on tithes and offerings? Don't fake it. Don't fake it. Don't fake it. Don't fake it. Don't, don't, don't have all these blessings. Hey, Job, Job had what he had because he gave to God. But even Job wasn't going through life without facing some trials and tribulations. Now, now get this. It all, it all started because of God's love for Job. What? He got problems because God loved him? Oh, yes, he did. Oh, yes, he did. And the fact that he wanted the devil to know just how good Job was. This, this is the piece you got to get. God knew that Job wasn't perfect yet. Don't miss what I just said. Godly man did everything right, but God knew that Job wasn't perfect yet. Mmm. Mmm. Anybody in here perfect? Raise your hand. I'm glad you didn't. I didn't want to throw brother's guitar and hit you. Get this, maybe, maybe in all the mist and the problems that you're going through, did you ever think, well, maybe I'm going through this because God is bragging on me? Oh, y'all get that right there. I'm going to let that marinate for just a minute. Come on, Kermit, that's just like the seasoning you put in that meat. Come on, I want you to get this right here. Maybe, maybe, maybe God's sitting up there bragging on you, Steve. <laughs> yeah, look, at, look at my boy, Steve. Look, see what you can do with him. Oh, y'all better get this right here. Satan, Satan hates you, y'all. He hates God. He hates anything to do with God. So he will always seek permission, come on, y'all, to try you, to test you, and the intent to destroy you. But you better get what I said, what I just said. He has to ask permission. Y'all ought to be shouting right now. He has to ask permission. You're not going through hell because God didn't let him. God made you. God put you where you're at. Knows everything about you. If you believe in the word, you believe he has a plan for you. Well, wait a minute. If he's got plans for me, there may be good days and maybe bad days in my plan. Oh, yeah, but hear this word. He has to seek permission. What Satan doesn't understand is that God never gives permission for you to be put to the test unless he knows you can get through the test. Mm. So here's point number one. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you can bear it. You can bear it. You can bear it. The son says it's going to be all right. 
The song says, hey, God has favor in me. I'm, I'm working y'all songs today. 1 Corinthians 10 and 13 says, watch this right here. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as in common to man. But God is faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able? But will, but will, with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear. You say, well, that's a temptation. That's not a problem. But let me break this down to you. See, the temptation comes is when you start going through the struggle and you get tempted to forget God. When you get tempted, come on, y'all, to cast God aside. That's the temptation. God is saying, I'm going to cast that out. That, that's what Job was. Job loved him. But, but Job got, 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 got so pressed down, he got tempted to lose confidence in God. To start to question God. <laughs> God allows Satan to bring disaster on Job. Some of you have had to face the things. Come on, that, that Job experience. Maybe you lost someone that you loved or, or your money is a little funny right now in the bank. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Come on, y'all. Jo jo Job lost it all. He lost his children, all ten at the same time. He lost all his possessions at the same time. So we find Job in this deep, dark depression with doubts and with fears. The same kind all of us have had once upon a time in our lives. But guess what? He didn't blame God for his troubles. Get this. But he questioned God. Why, Lord? Why is all this happening to me? Why don't you answer me? Some of you suffer from constant nagging pains. It's never going away. But the scripture says he'll give you a way to get through it. Point number two. You got to make sure you know who your friends are. <laughs> you got to make sure you know who your friends are while you're going through stuff. You got to know who to turn to. You got to know who to trust. Come on, you can't tell everybody your business. Y'all better hear Rev right now. You, 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 you got to know who your friends are. Job's life got so bad... <clears throat> That his wife finally said, Job, why not just curse God and die? If she had any faith in God, she had lost it. Kids gone. All the riches gone. Servants gone. Come on, y'all. That's when it got bad, when the servants left. Y'all missed that. Y'all missed that right there. In her heart, she blamed God and just wanted it to all be over. But get this piece. Get, get, get this piece right here. This is how your friends do. It got bad, but she didn't holler, Sherry, well, it's so bad, I'm going to die. Y'all missed that. It's easy for me to tell you, Ken, it's bad. Go die. Can't y'all see CJ telling me it's bad? We done lost this. We done lost that. See, why don't you go die? Y'all know what I'm about to do, don't y'all? There's truly going to be an exorcism that day. It's easy to tell somebody else to go do something, but, but, but she wasn't jumping out there saying she was going to die. That's how your friends do you. Come on now. Ain't that a blip? But even then, somebody say even then, Job stood strong. And in Job 2.10, we, we see here his answer to her. Probably much better than my answer would have been. Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. 
Y'all know I wouldn't have said that. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God and shall not receive evil? No, I wouldn't have said that, y'all. Then Job's best friends tried to intervene on his behalf. Watch this. Friends mean well, y'all, but they make matters worse. They really do. There are times when friends, they just don't understand. They don't have any answers either. It's amazing when they got a lot to say but no answer. But they feel they got something to say. Added fuel to the fire. Now his friends, brother Rob, start to blame him for his own trouble. You, you, you must have committed something great. You did something bad. Lord, have mercy. You, you, you need to repent, Job. Yeah, y'all get this, get this, get this, get this, get this. There are times. There are times when that may be the case in your life. That's right. But remember, God let Satan have Job. Mm. If you're facing hard troubles today, yes, you got to search your heart. You need, to, you need to ask and reckon with yourself, is this happening because of something I did? Is, is, is my car, did I get in this car accident because I faked on my tires? I got that tires back in there. Am I losing this or am I losing that or did I lose this job because God, God, God says, well, you're not being faithful to me, so I'm going to take that. You got to search your own heart on that. If sin is there, that, that, that may be bringing judgment against you, repent. And here's the good news. We got a God that forgives. Now, if you look in the mirror and you truthfully say to yourself, I find no fault in what I'm going through. All right. Then there's chances that it's not about judgment, but it's about your test. It's about your trial. It's about the fact that God's up there bragging on you. Come on, y'all. Get this piece, church family. Jo Job's trials came because of Satan, not for any other reason. Remember that. So, so, so don't, don't go around condemning anyone in the midst of their troubles. Who are you? Who are you to judge somebody else? Your hand's just as dirty as everybody else's. Your mouth been just as dirty as everybody else's. Your eyes have been just as dirty as everybody else's. Your walk has been just as dirty as everybody else's. Oh, y'all can say amen. Who are you to judge? Because I'm pastor, that makes me better than no. What, 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 what we have to get to is that repenting part where God washes us, and then I really don't care what you say after that. Once I give it all to God, once I give him everything, once I sacrifice my all to him, it doesn't matter what you say. It's still people come up to me, man, you remember when? Yeah, I remember. I don't do that no more. Especially them jokes that, that, that really ain't seen me since then till now. I go back to college. Oh, man, I was rough in college, y'all. Y'all couldn't have came to my college because it was my college. Say amen, somebody. You don't, I, I don't go around condemning anybody because I know where I've been. I could have seen some of y'all in the club. I ain't going to tell. Don't, don't, don't get acting like, oh. Remember this. Remember this. It's not what you say about somebody. 
is how you say it. Y'all remember that? And if you can't say something good about somebody, just don't say anything at all. You don't know what they're going through. You don't know what they've been through. You don't know where they are with God. And generally the reason your glasses look real foggy on them because it's your fog. So I get to point three. I'm going to let y'all go. Come on. Here's point three. Here's point three. I'm going to let you go. Don't, don't forget who God is. Don't forget who God is. Don't do that. Now, now, now God had all these questions for Job, all right? These questions are meant to remind Job, don't forget who I am. Who put the sun and the moon in their place? Come on, Job, tell me. Who, made, who decided that the grass was going to be green? Who decided that, that the sky was going to be blue? Come on, Job, tell me. Who decided where we are going to put the ocean, the Atlantic? And, 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 and oh, yeah, Job, who decided to kick up that storm? last week come on Job you got all of this stuff you got all this wisdom you got this you got that but Job tell me tell me who, who, who made the parting line in the middle of the earth so we find that Job did repent. And the trials came to an end. Let's make sure you understand what Job repented for because I don't want to lose you in this message. Because Job, I've told you, was a good man, this, that, and the other. But what Job had to repent for was doubting God. Was forgetting who God was. God restored him to an even greater life. Greater life. Listen, y'all, when, 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 when bad things happen, it's hard to think about trusting in God. I get that. When, when things look so very bad, we have to remember that God is able to do the impossible. You've thanked him for things before. That means you believed in what he did in your life then. Well, if he did it then, why can't he do it again? Remember, you can bear it. In times of trouble, you can bear it. In times of trouble, remember who your friends are. In times of trouble, listen to this, y'all. Don't forget who God is. Those three things. You can bear it. Know who your friends are. And remember who God is. I, I don't know your answer, but somebody got some questions. But God knows. I, I, I I can't hear your hurts, but God can. Come on, y'all. I, I, I cannot give you a miracle of healing and deliverance, but God can. Trust him in spite of everything that you're going through. Remember, it's going to be all right. Remember. Our God has favor for you. God's favoring you over failure? Come on, y'all. God's, God's favoring you. Man, I love, I love them words. Come, come on, come, come on, come, Calvin. What, 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 what do the people do to you? Tell me them verses in that song that they sung. Come on. Huh? They whisper, conspire, told lies. 
But God has favor on you. That's what they did to Job. They conspired on him. His best friends, his best friends. Job, it must have been something you did. Bless God when times are good and bless him when times are bad. It's going to be all right. God has favor on you. Man, I just love the way God put this together today. Won't you stand to your feet?